and then I need to just kind of look at the permissions and for me the easiest way to do that is from a command prompt perspective so I'm gonna go over here and kind of make this large here so everybody can see what I'm doing and first thing I'm gonna check um, you know, probably the easiest thing would be what's in ver www and I just want to make sure that I have the appropriate permissions on portal on the on this directory because of my umask which is 0022 the, you know when I create a directory by default it's 755 in other words you know the owner has full permission and the group has read and execute and other has read and execute and that's what you'll want for most things in that folder and I'm going to go to portal and excuse me portal 1 and I just want to, again, I want to make sure that the files here have at least read permission and that the directories have at least read and execute. Remember that with POSIX permissions, um, a directory needs both read and execute. Otherwise, they won't be able to browse or go into the directory. So files can be just read without execute, but directories have to have execute with read. That's still read only for a directory. Okay, so that looks like it's okay there. <coughs> We may have to tweak permissions if if any of these needs to be writable, um, you know, or possibly executable. You know, m mostly the executable Perl scripts are going to be in the CGI bin, but some of these may need to be made writable by a group, um, probably not others. So we'll kind of again we'll just have to tinker with it and we'll cross that bridge as it comes, because for this version of Ubuntu the installation script doesn't work, um, you know, completely automatically. So that's the website part of it. Now I'm going to go to my CGI bin. Remember that was user, lib, and CGI-bin. And again, I just want to check permissions. I want to make sure that I have 755 on portal 1. And then I'm going to go into portal 1. Okay. I'm going to do a long listing here on, of portal 1. Um, now all of these guys... Um, should be at least 755 and some of them may even need to be 775 or 777. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a wildcard mask um, and I'm going to use the recursive option on a couple of these. So first off I'm going to sudo chmod and I'm going to do 644 um, I'm going to do 644 everything that is a well most of the text files actually I would like to do 644 which is you know um, in this case we're just giving read permission uh, and we're not giving write permission or execute however again the problem is with this application several of those may need to be writable so I'll go back in and tighten this up later but to be on the safe side I'm gonna kinda 7 I'm just gonna do 755 everything for now with the recursive option and then we'll go back in and gradually you know add more permission to the files that need it. There are data files, there are certain scripts that have to write information to themselves or to other scripts as part of this application. So because of that they'll need more permission. Um, but with the recursive option I'm just going to use a wildcard. And okay. And again to see you know to reflect those changes, to see the changes that were made, now we can look at all of these files here. And I know that like this file has to be written to, um, so it's going to need, you know, in this case, I'm going to sudo and chmod and 775. I'm trying to avoid 777. 755 is better. 775 may be necessary for some. I'm trying to avoid 777. I'm going to try that on config Perl. And in the admin. I know that a lot of these scripts will also require some write privileges in the group. So again, I'm just going to do sudo and chmod. And instead of 755, I'm going to do 775. And I can maybe go in and tighten these up later. Should follow the principle of least privilege, which is, you know, don't give more permission. <coughs> or give the bare amount of permission that is necessary to get the job done. <clears throat> However, there are a lot of files that are going to require write access here.
but basically there's a script that you want to run right here install CGI <laughs> and it's probably going to fail the first few times but to start the tinkering process let's go ahead and run it through the web browser okay so I'm going to I'm going to do that and then I know the path to the directory here's my host name and I'm going to need to go to <coughs> uh, CGI Ben and portal 1 and then I want to run the script install CGI it's executable okay and then all right here's the install script so it's running in Perl version 5 you want to go through and check some of these options. Um, make sure your host name is set, you know, properly. That this should be whatever is configured as your host name and your host file. Um, I can leave all of these the same. That is the root of my my website. Th this is the place or the position where all of my files are in the CGI bin. However, when I get down to here, I need to change some things because, again, I remember I put it in a subdirectory because I'm thinking that in the future I want to try out a lot of different scripts and chat rooms and portals and things and so I want to organize them in subdirectories and not just throw them all together in one directory that would make things difficult to manage and you know we may end up having problems where one application writes files over another application or has files with the same name um, but again you know I, ha I have to modify the path accordingly because I'm not using the default path from root. So in this case it's, it's going to be everything after ver www should be portal 1 because I made that subdirectory in the path. And portal 1 images uploads, let's see, portal 1, portal 1, portal 1, portal 1, portal 1, and then the CGI bin stuff looks good. We'll leave that there. We can always modify that and change that later. All of this looks good. Detected the path. I'm going to set the time. And Apache and Linux. Okay, and now when I click on this, I'm going to get lots of errors. But this is part of the tinkering process because, again, this you know this script was not written to work perfectly with an Ubuntu 10.10 system. Um, you know, look at the bright side of it or the silver lining in the cloud. You didn't have to write your own portal or forum. Somebody did that for you. But you you do have to you know you at least have to be willing to put forth enough effort to tinker with it to make it work. So now notice here we have a software error and it's in conf config dat. And so what's going on here, um, you know, in this case line 742, it's, it's trying to write to that file and it doesn't have enough permission. So me following the principle of least privilege, I didn't give it enough permission. So if I look at the conf, like I let me go into the conf folder. And it's got 755 right now. Um, so I'm going to try 775. That is, you know, given the group right, but still making other read only. And we'll see if that's enough permission. Um, there's only one file, um, you know, in this directory, so I can just use a wildcard. Let's save me some typing. All right, so that changed it from 755 to now it's 775 and POSIX permission. So I'm going to back up. Don't want to change anything. I'm going to resubmit and see if I get the same error message. And could not open conf config dat. So, you know, again, the same issue there. So 775 is, is not enough. So let's try 777. We'll make everything writable there. And I'm going to back up. And Okay. All right. So we now we've passed that error. So we know that that file, that DAT file, needed full permission for user, for the group, and for other. And now we're getting a different error. And again, this is a permission issue. So um, if tinkering and debugging frustrates you, then you know this is probably not you know not something you would enjoy. But on the other hand. You know, think about it. You're, you're going to get a really nice chat room and application if you're willing to just invest a little bit of your time. But yeah, you're going to have to debug it. You're going to have to tinker with it some to make it work in Ubuntu. Um, now, this being said, you know, who knows? They might release an updated version or write a new installer 
that is configured to work with the system environment variables or that's more friendly with Ubuntu later. You never know. But it's good practice. 